For so many years, I would find myself constantly thinking of new ideas. I'd start a bunch of different things, learning a new instrument or language, or starting another YouTube channel, but I'd never actually keep consistent with anything. That was until recently, when I started using a specific methodology to organize exactly what I needed to get done every day. The simple act of putting my tasks and thoughts down somewhere has had a massive effect on my productivity, allowing me to create more than I ever thought was possible. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Amon, I'm a student studying computer science and economics, and in this video we're going to be talking about why you should be making a to-do list every single day, and why Todoist is my app of choice for this task. This video is the third part of my productivity workflow series, where I teach you how I go from idea to completed product, and what tools or apps I use to take me along the way. Timestamps are in the description, let's begin. In the past, I wouldn't really think about what I had to get done in a certain day before that day began. I would pretty much just float through life, and on the off chance I felt like doing something, I would pretty much weigh my options then and decide what to do. Basically, most of my day would be cycling between three states relaxation, decision making, and action. First, I'd be relaxing, laying around or watching videos or whatever. Then, when I got tired of doing nothing, I would think to myself, hmm, what should I do to be productive? I would really only think about what I needed to get done after I was tired of being lazy. At this point, I'd run through my head everything I thought I had to get done during the day and then select one of those options and run with that. Finally, as soon as I got tired of working, I'd start relaxing and the cycle would begin again. So what's wrong with this style of task management? Because I feel like a lot of people just do this innately without realizing what they're actually doing. While our minds are always better at doing one thing at a time rather than multitasking. For example, if we need to get task A, B, and C done each three times, it's so much more effective to do A, 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 B, 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 then C, 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 rather than cycling through A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. We're simply better at batching similar tasks together rather than switching our attention to many diverse things. I recently wrote a newsletter on batching and its many different applications to different areas. You can go ahead and read that on manazar.org slash newsletter if you'd like. The common style of task management, relaxation, decision-making, action, follows the ABC, ABC, ABC framework. This is inherently less productive because you're cycling through many work items instead of sitting down and figuring out exactly what you're going to do beforehand and just operating on that. Another problem with this, which I've really felt myself, is decision fatigue. Basically, if you're following the cycling model, every time you decide to be productive, you have to weigh everything you've already gotten done and everything you need to get done every single time. It's pretty draining and tiring to have to go through everything you want to do every time you decide to do something, and it's truly a waste of mental effort if you could easily do it all at once. That brings me to the solution to these problems, which is make a to-do list every single day. There are a few basic principles that everyone should follow when making a to-do list. I'll break those down right now. First of all, you need to pick a time of day to regularly do this, ideally around a 10 to 15 minute window. This needs to become a habit or part of your daily routine to have its maximum effect. I like to do this every evening for the next day. This way, everything I got done the previous day is still fresh in my mind, which really helps me assess all of my options and figure out my workload for the next day. All right, so now that you have a time slot to do this, the first step is a brain dump. You're gonna open a notes document or take out a piece of paper and pretty much just put everything down that's on your mind. Basically, you're just going to put down anything that's on your mind and anything you want to get done within the next few days. What did or didn't you get done today? Is there any homework due tomorrow? And how are you doing on your long-term endeavors? Don't worry about the scheduling or the timing, just get everything down that's bugging you on this piece of paper and out of mind. Now that we've performed a brain dump, we're going to start ranking and ordering these tasks. Now it's time to take out your to-do list, whether it's an app or a physical one. I'm going to talk about exactly which app I use later on. Look at the brain dump and figure out exactly which of these items is most pressing, which stuff do you absolutely have to get done by tomorrow, and isolate those either under the brain dump or in a different document. Remember, your brain dump was over the next few days or week, so right now you're just isolating what you need to get done over the next day. Now that we've done that, we get to my favorite part of the process, which is the daily highlight. Every time I make a to-do list, I pick one task. What is the most important task on this list? What is the one thing that you know you have to get done by tomorrow, no matter what? This is your daily highlight. If I'm doing a physical to-do list, I will put it at the top and circle it or star it to indicate that this is the most important thing that I have to get done. 
So why do I do this? Why do I only pick one task to indicate as the most important? Well, first it helps me ground myself. If I know the one thing that I have to get done no matter what, I can now schedule that and then format everything around it. If I know what the number one priority is, I now have a base to format everything else around. It really helps me solidify my thoughts for the next day. Now you're going to schedule everything out. I like to put the items down in the order that I plan to do them, but it's really up to you. This is your canvas. You can customize it however you see fit. Now that we know what goes into a good to-do list, we can compare a paper one versus my app of choice, which is Todoist. Let's start with the paper list. What are the benefits of going analog? Well, first of all, it's just kind of nice to have a physical list. I know some people who love stationery who like to take all physical notes and do everything by hand so they can use custom colors and really customize it as they see fit. I'm not like that. I don't really like physically writing stuff down, but it's up to you. If you enjoy that, more power to you. Go ahead and use a paper list. Another advantage is that paper keeps you more focused on what you're doing. For me, if I'm doing anything digital, there's a chance that a notification will pop up and I'll get distracted. When you have the entire world at your fingertips, it's kind of tempting to dive in and get distracted with the internet. Paper to-do lists can also be faster. If you have a physical list, a physical sheet of paper right next to you, it can be really quick and easy just to reach over and write something down on it. You don't have to pull out your phone and open up some sort of app and go through that whole process every time. It also can be a lot less complicated. For people who don't like using computers, a physical list can really help them get started with the to-do list process. What are the disadvantages? Well, first of all, it's just kind of weird if you're on the go to have to always remember to carry this physical sheet of paper with you at all times. If you want to change something, it also can be kind of weird because you have to use an eraser or cross it out. It's not as clean as using an electronic version. Over the past few months, I've gone completely paperless. It's been a long time since I've written or made anything by hand. I honestly don't even know if I have a pencil in this entire apartment which is probably not a good thing. It's really up to personal preference. My mom brings around this physical grocery list everywhere she goes, and she enjoys that. So whatever you like the most, you should do. Finally, paper to-do lists have a lot less features. Every detail or system you have to completely make yourself. For example, there's no notification features, there's no scheduling out, and there's a whole lot of other features that paper to-do lists simply can't match. That brings us to Todoist, the app that I use every single day for this kind of stuff. This is just going to be a brief overview of Todoist. I'm not going to go into extended detail about any specific feature. So if you open up Todoist, you'll see something like this. Todoist has three main windows. We have Inbox, Today, and Upcoming. Let's start with Inbox. Inbox is basically the catch-all for all of your to-do items. Basically, anytime you have a to-do item, whether it's today or next week or next month, it gets thrown into Inbox. So it's a really great place if you want to see all of your items listed out. It also has the date listed underneath them. As you can see over here, we have today because all of the Inbox items are for today. Next, we have the today view. This is basically where you'll go every time you want to view your current to-do list or you want to create a to-do list for today. Finally, we have the upcoming view, which is honestly one of the most useful aspects of Todoist. You can schedule out pretty much as far ahead as you want any of your tasks. And in the upcoming view, you can see a calendar up here, along with the list of all of your tasks per date. This is really useful for scheduling homework assignments or project deadlines, and that's what I'm planning on using it for this academic year. To do this is really simple. All you have to do is click add task over here if you want to create a new to do item. To do this has a bunch of small features. For example, we have the projects view over here. Projects are items that you can create to group multiple to do items together. So for example, we have YouTube, which I'm planning on grouping all of my YouTube items together. We have blog writing, internship applications, vlogs. You're basically just grouping together different tasks. I've known people who have grouped them together based on classes or a bunch of other stuff like that. This all adds to the organization and flexibility that Todoist offers. Let's talk about priorities. So notice how we have record next videos at the top and it's red. Then we have do biology reading, which is orange. Finally, we have the red and clear. These are different priorities. Todoist has four of them that you can apply to any to-do item and it'll auto rank them based on the priority. So if we click on these three dots over here and change the priority of build chairs to one, notice how it shoots to the top and it's just under record next video because I made that priority one earlier. This is really great for the daily highlight and ordering stuff I was talking about before. There are so many more advanced features you can dive into, like the productivity view, which tracks how many tasks you're getting done per day and awards you points and can really show you your progress over a long period of time. 
There are also labels and filters and searching and a whole bunch of other stuff that you can explore. Additionally, Todoist is totally free, which is always really nice for apps like this. So final thoughts. The main idea that I want to stress here is that it really doesn't matter what sort of system you use, whether it's a paper system or any sort of app. The truth is, is that the details and the specifics don't really matter at all. People always tend to focus on the specific tool. They're like, if I use the specific pen that Stephen King uses, I will become Stephen King, which is completely missing the point. It's so much more important that you build a habit of making a to-do list every single day. You don't even have to do all of the complex stuff that I talked about, like making a daily highlight or ranking your items. The simple act of just creating a list and being intentional with what you're doing every day will make a huge difference to your productivity. It's totally worth the five to 10 minutes it takes to do it. The most important thing with workflow and really life in general is that you're being super intentional with everything you do. So you're not caught in the trap of just floating through life. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and subscribe. You might also enjoy my last few videos about how I come up with new ideas and exactly how I write long form content. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.